Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Chaitanya and you can call me Chai. I have more than a decade and a half of experience with software development as a developer, tech lead, architect and various other roles around designing and delivering software products. Now with the understanding of the term artifact, let us now look at Azure Artifact servers from Azure DevOps platform. Azure Artifact is part of uh, Azure DevOps organization or a project that you want to that you have created. Now, if you're not able to see the artifact uh, artifact uh, services, then it's either en not enabled for your project or you do not have permissions. If you are the project admin, you could go to project settings and and scroll down to see various services that you can enable disable for a project. So in this case, I have my Azure Artifact enabled, so I'm able to access artifacts and manage the same. So now going back to the artifact, uh, the basic information and the getting started uh, on Azure Artifact, you can find in uh, the details on the link, uh, which I have put as a comment. And uh, when it comes to the pricing, uh, you will mainly have to pay for the cost uh, for the size or the uh, storage that you're going to use. It comes with uh, two uh, GB of free space. Anything more than that, you'll have to pay for uh, the storage. So with this uh, basic details and uh, you know, Azure Artifact um, enabled, let me go ahead and create a uh, step-by-step guide to create a new uh, field and basic settings. Now. Uh, in order to create a new feed, you will have to specify a name, a unique name, which is uh, unique to your organization. And then you will also have to design the visibility of your feed. So example, if, if your Azure DevOps is linked to the Azure AD, you can control uh, who can view and manage the packages or download the packages from this feed, only who are part of the Azure AD groups or uh, account or you can specify all those who have access to this particular organization or part of the organization can, can uh, view the packages in the feed. Or if you want to specifically say that uh, or control at a, at a user level, you can say, I want to give access to specific people yourself so that you can control. So I'm going to select members of the academy, whoever is part of the organization will be able to see this uh, feed and, and download or view the packages. We'll, we'll, we will cover the upstream sources in our next video. So I'll, for now, I'll say don't include any packages from standard common uh, public source like NuGet or NPMJS. And the last thing you'll have to decide uh, while creating a feed is uh, what is the scope of the feed? Uh, do you want it to be at organization level, which is generally a case when you want to share the code and the libraries across the projects and across the organization? then you will select organization. Uh, but uh, in most cases, in a project, the field will be at a project level so that you can share it across the repositories and the code of that project. I'm going to select project, the recommended option of project level, and then go ahead and create. So once the field is created, right now there's not much and nothing is available because we are not uh, we are not configured in any upstream and we don't have any feeds any any packages now let's let's now look at what are the settings and 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 permissions available for you to manage so clicking on settings from in your, in, here you can list down all the feeds that are currently uh, part of this project or or where you have access and then once you select a particular feed you can go into settings and then uh, the, again, you have the name of the feed that you can anytime go ahead and edit. When you edit the name, it might break an existing uh, team or group of developers who are currently using. And then uh, various other settings with respect to uh, how do you manage deleted packages and its version, how do you want to share the packages, very basic details and how long, what are the maximum number of versions that you want to support in a package. So you can say, I want to have uh, 
up only last five or last, in this case let's say i want to say only the last five versions including the latest version to be available for users to download and i want to keep the uh, packages downloaded from third party libraries like npm and node.js i want to keep it for 24 days uh, right and then similarly uh, with this going to the permissions this is where you will be able to select add user or a group into this and provide them uh, access to your feed now when you're providing the access you will one thing you have to select the user and then you have to select the role right so as the uh, name indicates owner is who you, you are making this person the owner of the of the feed and contributor is somebody who can uh, publish the packages and uh, and and view the existing packages collaborator is somebody who could not only publish but he, he or she could go ahead and uh, approve and manage the overall feed and the packages of uh, permissions and uh, delete packages reader is somebody who can just view the packages and download he will not be able to publish new versions to the uh, uh, feed and when it comes to view this is something that you can define based on a project uh, so uh, this basically defines how your packages will move and how you can control uh, uh, the feed access and the packet package access so for example your local could be all the development packages which are currently under development or are part, are part of sprint which you do not want your production code and production packages to uh, pipelines to use you will define you will publish the package as a local view and then pre-release is something that you want yeah, that you, are, you want to test and validate before you release it to the to your end user so uh, why the views are required is views are useful when uh, in in the CICD pipelines and also it will help you to approve and manage who can see what uh, which which views and which packages of which view so i'll keep that default and then upstream is where <clears throat> we will look into the details in the next video but here you can configure what are upstreams you want to uh, download and act uh, this feed can act as a mirror for the, uh, the third party packages and with this uh, basic settings you could also specify who can create feed these are general settings of the azure artifact me being the admin project admin i can see these settings not everybody will be able to see so with this uh, with this basic details of how to create a feed how to manage settings uh, you you will be able to set up a basic uh, azure artifact feed which for, into which you can then publish packages and download and view the packages we will look into the more details on publishing and download the packages in the upcoming videos and I hope you were able to follow the steps and 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 create a feed for yourself. And and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future videos on Azure Artifact and various other skills that I that I provide. So let's let start by uh, going back to the Azure Artifact feed that we created in the previous video and then go ahead and configure and understand upstream management so uh, going back to uh, the academy field which i created in, in the previous video i will go back to the settings page wherein uh, uh, the upstream sources uh, can be configured so as you can see here there is not too much uh, updated so i can go ahead and say add upstream and here i can choose between the common public source which is uh, like npm and nuget or i can connect to an existing azure artifact feed and add them as a upstream into this particular feed so let me select public uh, source and here you could list uh, you could see the list of common um, uh, New package management servers and global available so example npm is for your front end like react front and angular applications and the packages nuget is mainly for the dotnet based uh, package library similarly you have maven for java and various other 
uh, package server. So I can basically you can go ahead and select the package uh, feed that you want and just say add. Similarly, you can go ahead and add, uh, uh, let's say I'll go ahead and add the npm server, npm uh, registry. And what it means is if once your developers, uh, all developers have to do is connect to this particular feed, the academy feed, and then uh, they could search for packages in NuGet, packages in npmjs without having to uh, having access or having need to connect to the the, the location of this new get so what what your academy feed does is it, it entirely connects to these upstream sources and does the search and gets the packages and then you will you will basically be uh, using the the upstream sources but via the the shadow of uh, academy feed so it provides a lot more control a lot more uh, ability for you to uh, search uh, and manage packages as a single feed rather than having to connect to various um, uh, feeds and various uh, global services and everything. So, so this is the simplest way to go ahead and uh, uh, configure upstreams and then go ahead and configure them in your applications, in your IDEs uh, to connect to your feed so that you could use it. So we'll cover more details about how to connect to this particular feed and use the NuGet server uh, services. Uh, in, in an upcoming video and I hope you have learned uh, how to uh, configure upstreams and manage them in, in this particular video. Thank you. In this video, we will look at uh, how to configure an existing Azure Artifact feed to connect to various upstreams such as uh, NuGet or NPM or uh, any other uh, global packages that are available so that you, your Azure Activate field can act as a mirror of, of the common and public uh, package servers. So uh, if, if, if you're not yet seen my previous video on how to create a new feed and the details around the feed, uh, you, you can look into the, uh, the link below and, uh, and go into that video. Um, now begin to understand the steps required to connect uh, the Azure Artifact feed in Visual Studio. For this purpose, I have the feed which I created in, my, in one of my previous videos. Uh, you, can, you can click on the link uh, in the description to uh, view uh, the basic videos on Azure Artifact and how to create a feed. Uh, and also I have a sample code which I've created uh, here uh, in Visual Studio and I have it open. So to get started, uh, you can go ahead and select your feed and then say connect. So Azure Artifact will show you various options depending on the technology and the ID that you want to use. Uh, it will provide the steps to follow. So since here I'm using Visual Studio, I will select Visual Studio and it gives me the steps that I can use. Going back to Visual Studio, uh, how do we manage package sources uh, in Visual Studio is via go to, go into Tools, NuGet Package Manager and Manager Settings. Here, under NuGet Package Manager, go into Package Source. As you can see here, right now, NuGet.org is what is enabled and which means that all your NuGet packages are downloaded from the third party or the global source. So I'm, what I'm going to do is, do is remove a NuGet as a source and then add a new source. I will call it as the name of my feed and copy the source URL from the steps. So I'll do a copy and I'll paste the source under source. Now when I click on update, depending on if you're logged in or if you're, if you're not authenticated, it may ask you to log in. And then once you're authenticated yourself, it would be added successfully. So what I'm going to finally do is uncheck NuGet R and just select Academy field to ensure. And basically I'm, I'm indicating this to, to always connect to this field for any NuGet packages. Now I click on okay. 
Now, if I go back to manage NuGet packages, and if you notice here, it would just show me the academy underscore field with no other source. Now, if I go and search Newton soft, right, it would go ahead and so what basically is, is happening is you go, the Azure artifact field is going back to the NuGet global source and trying to search because it didn't find anything in the academy field itself. So it will go uh, search uh, in, in, the, in the current field. If nothing is found with this name, it will go into the NuGet org and uh, get the packages. So now these are the packages available from on the NuGet global store, but you know, you're able to see that here, even though you're connecting to the academy underscore feed, uh, so that you know you need not have to manage multiple so multiple uh, package managers and everything all you need is one feed academy feed and then or one feed for a project and then it can entirely connect to multiple feeds and have one uh, view for the user to search find so let's get started to understand how to uh, use the config file in your source code to specify the source of your NuGet packages, our Azure Artifact feed, uh, and, and um, the source code or the new members would directly be able to connect as long as they have access. So uh, just like in my previous video, I have the academic, academy feed, uh, feed, and then when I click on connect to feed, here again, uh, it will list down all the various uh, options and, and steps to connect using various IDEs and tools. Uh, since here we are using the NuGet, I'm going to select NuGet. Now here is where you can specify uh, or you will see the steps of how to uh, include a NuGet.config file uh, into your source code so, so that you can configure uh, the source and the access to that in the source code and no need to update anywhere else. So back to Visual Studio, uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add a new file, new item, and I'll, se I'll select the XML file. Let me search for XML. I'll select an XML file and I'll call it uh, I'll give it a name, nuget.config. So here I have a simple nuget.config file and going back to the steps, I'll copy the complete body and paste. So now what we're basically doing here I'm just trying to see if it So here, um, basically the configuration provides the sources, all the sources available, and then we are adding a new key called Academy Feed with the source. So you will notice before that we are saying clear, which means, which indicates to the uh, the build agent or uh, our Visual Studio to clear all the sources so that only this is the feed or the source that is available. So now whenever you build or anytime you build this code or you try to manage it, the, the source code or the, the ID would use the nuget.config to connect to the source and uh, download the packages or view the packages. So uh, this is a way to uh, avoid a dependency on the tools, IDs that the developer is going to use and keep it as part of the you know, project. Uh, you need to be careful with respect to uh, the security side of it, wherein you have to ensure the source code is, con is secured and controlled before you go with this option uh, so that uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, get into a uh, security issue. So uh, with this specified and uh, academic feed, again, uh, first time uh, anybody log in, it would ask you to log in to ensure the developer has access. Uh, in to this field before it can view or uh, allow us to view and download the package. 
So let's let's look into the step, the details on how to configure a CI pipeline to connect to your Azure Artifact field. So I have a sample project and a, a pipeline built for a .NET based code. Uh, a typical uh, .NET project will have uh, the steps to restore the packages and do a build. Uh, this is very specific to, uh, you know, it also does additionally the sonar scan everything. Uh, but you know, the key part, uh, two, two key steps is to restore the packages and then build. Now, if you look into the restore command, uh, here you could specify where, where where to download the packages from. Now, as we have, if your source code is configured to use NuGet config, you can select fields in my NuGet config and then select the path to where you have your uh, NuGet package, uh, NuGet.config file. And if you're not, if you do not have the NuGet.config, then you can say you can specify fields I select and then select the feed that you want to use for this particular project, uh, right? So this is uh, uh, here again, Academy feed. So which means that you are saying when you're restoring the packages, go ahead and use the feed, which is here. And since the Academy feed is uh, configured to have NuGet as an upstream, I can uncheck this and it would still work fine to restore the common packages. <coughs> So similarly, you can, if you select NuGet, uh, which means that you know you can go ahead and con select your NuGet config file, and additionally provide the credentials or the details of authenticating yourself to the to the feed. So here you can specify you know the the feed URL and generate a peer pad token of the particular user, and then uh, use and you could basically use the pad token to authenticate uh, every time the restore is happening. So this is the simplest way to restore uh, packages from uh, Azure Artifact feed, uh, either from nuget.config file or directly specifying the, uh, the, the details of the feed. So with this, you will be able to uh, restore and, uh, and build the code in your CI pipelines uh, if you are using the Azure Artifact feed. Uh -huh.